So today we are doing scrub stream number two. All about the phone. Yay for cleaning up our phones. If you have a separate device, like an iPad or some way you can tune in so you can have your phone with you while I go through some hot tips with you today, I'm gonna to also share uh, the most helpful apps I have found and platforms and tools for running my uh, business and life. Okay, so if you're looking for some new apps or some new things to check out for doing the various things you might do in, in, in business, if you're a business owner um, or just in organizing your life, then you'll enjoy today's scrub session. So welcome to our phone scrub stream. That is a mouthful. This is going to be a practice for greater presence. Okay, so, or maybe another way of saying that is to be less phony, P-H-O-N-E-Y. Um, so rituals for greater presence. So I'm going to read you the intro for this chapter, and then I'm going to share with you some of the tips and um, resources that I have in that chapter of the workbook. I actually take you through a whole process in the workbook of truly gutting your phone and getting it working better for you. And I'm going to share some of those pieces today. And then I'll also share a landing page I have for you on WholeFit where I have all of my apps linked for you and um, different platforms and tools that I use to run our business or run my business. All right, intro. Our phones can often become a place where we park memories, ideas, inspiration, and other things that we file in the land of tomorrow. When you do this scrub on a quarterly basis, you'll be keeping your device working for you and not the other way around. For this scrub, it's ideal if you can do it on a day when you can sit outside with a little sunshine in your skin. Ideally, you want to be able to move through it without distraction. It's time to show your phone who the boss is. On the next page, you'll find a worksheet you can print to follow the steps to scrub your phone. When you do this each season, your phone will carry a new frequency to it and you'll no, no longer feel like it's running you. So the worksheet that I give you on the next page takes you through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different categories of cleaning out your phone. Uh, the first time you do this, it will take you a couple of hours for sure. I'm assuming if you haven't done this in a while, you probably have a large portion of the, gig the gigabytes on your phone being uh, consumed by Photos, videos, podcasts, maybe you have um, ebooks you've downloaded on there or audiobooks. Uh, this is going to be a chance for you to really scrub that clean because when we have a lot of things in storage on our phone, as you know, your battery will tank quickly, right? So the categories I take you through are how to uh, basically clean out your storage in an easy way. So we start with podcasts. Um, I, I have I probably subscribe to about 10 or 12 different podcasts. And if I don't do this every three or four months, that will be the majority of the gigs on my phone are actually podcast episodes that I maybe haven't listened to or saved. So also in there, just under that topic of podcasts, this is really an opportunity for you to ask yourself, is this still serving me in this season of my life, right? This is a question that I've, I've mentioned in a few of these sessions already, the goal of doing the scrub is to take with you into the next season only that which is supporting the person you're becoming. So you're asking that question of everything on your phone. Does this still represent who I'm becoming? Is this still serving me? So unsubscribing to podcasts that perhaps don't serve you in this season is an example of that. Um, going through your apps. So I take you through an exercise of uh, deleting obviously apps you no longer use. Okay. I'm sure you know how to do that. Um, but then once you've gutted, right, you've cleared out the apps you no longer use, then you would just do a quick update. So go to the um, app store, click the update button. That will app update all of your current ones to make sure that they're working properly. And then you store them and sort them into albums. This is a key thing you want. When you look at your device, you want it to feel minimal and spacious not chaotic. Um, you don't want that device that you are probably finding yourself on 
quite often throughout the day to be something that is constantly pulling you out of presence. You want to, when you grab your phone, to be in a position of owning that phone, not it owning you, right? So a very simple way to do that is to have your home screen be something that reflects back to you that frequency, something organized and peaceful and uh, a system, right? Not something that's dinging at you all the time and chaotic when you open it up. Um, then we go through photos. So I share with you a tool in Seasonal Scrub that will help you sort through mass amounts of photos. It will help you clear out any duplicates. It will find all similar photos and allow you to choose your favorite and then get rid of the rest for you. Um, I, when I do this every couple of months, I used to do this every time I was on a flight actually. So rather than be on my um, phone during a flight, I would take that time to go through and clean up all of my photos. And I used to be on a flight once a month or so. And now that that's changed so drastically, uh, this is part of my quarterly process. So clearing out those photos. And once I have all of my um, keepers and favorites, what I will do is organize them into albums. So based on topic or if it's, photos that I'm going to be using for social media, I'll either save them into an album called social media, or I will upload them to a platform such as Planoly. I don't know if any of you use that, but I'll, I'll organize all of my favorites so that when I'm doing some writing uh, and planning of my social media, I have all my favorite photos there to, to utilize. I don't always follow that just as a sidebar, I typically like to approach social media in a very organic way in the moment posting um, as I'm inspired because I find there's a there's definitely an energy to that. I'm sure you've noticed that when you plan out posts and you um, maybe, you know, you take a picture and, and there's an idea that's hit you today. If you wait months from now to post that, it doesn't always carry the same uh, reception with your audience because they can feel that, right? So I just wanted to mention that as a sidebar, but I do like to go through my favorites and every once in a while I'll, I'll go into um, that album on my phone and, and take a look at what I have there and I'll feel inspired in that moment to post something. Social media is the next part of that scrub. So unfollowing um, accounts that no longer resonate. This is a this is a big one. You want to check in with yourself quarterly to ask, you know, are the people you're engaging with um, still meant to go with you into the next season. And of course you can use the unfollow button, but the mute button works just as well. You can you can use that on Instagram, for example, if there's somebody that you, you don't necessarily want to be disconnected from, but maybe you just don't wanna see their stuff all the time. I'm sure when I was sharing um, information that was uh, beyond comfort levels last year, I'm sure a lot of people muted me, for example, <laughs> or perhaps they just did the unfollow. Um, but you know, this is, this is something you want to check in with on a quarterly basis. And, and also maybe you take the time during this scrub. I mentioned this in the worksheet to update your bio and your profile picture. So again, this is a process of just quick things you check through every quarter. Um, the last two pieces I give you in that worksheet are some uh, approaches for being harder to reach. Okay. So I'll share a little bit about that in a moment, but I take you through how to set up do not disturb settings on your phone. So for example, on my phone, every day between uh, nine and two, I have do not disturb on, which means I'm not getting any notifications. Um, texts are not coming in that because that's typically what I've blocked off as time that I am already committed to something. And chances are the people that need to reach me um, are right in this home or can be reached through my husband or someone else, right? So that's just a way that I protect my time. Uh, I also teach you about shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts. So this is huge when it comes to optimizing your time throughout the day, especially when there's key responses or links, things you're typically typing out. You want to set up shortcuts for these so that it's a quick phrase that you or a keyword that you type and then it posts the, the long form of that for you. So I wanna go through some tips that I maybe haven't mentioned yet, and then I want to share some resources that I prepared for you for today, um, which are all linked up obviously in the workbook. 
Uh, so let me go through just a few quick tips with you regarding our phone. And um, I'd love for you guys to share with each other. Is there something that you have found really works for you? Maybe it's an approach or an app or something that you love using in your life or business. Totally share it in the comments with us. So tip number one, always put your phone in airplane mode at night before bed, especially if you keep your phone in your bedroom. So a lot of you, you know, probably use your phone. I do as well as an alarm if needed. I don't wake up to an alarm um, any other time than when I have to catch a flight or something, but I do have uh, my phone in our bedroom. So I always turn it into uh, onto airplane mode. This disables the cell radio, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth from affecting you through EMF. So this will actually slightly impact your sleep quality, right? If you have EMF pumping at you while you're sleeping. Um, Second thing when it comes to protecting yourself on your phone is to consider having a VPN. This is a, call, a short form for virtual private network. I don't know how many of you are using this. Uh, I think this might be especially appealing to Canadians right now where, uh, so the Canadian government has been trying to pass through laws to basically influence what you are allowed to learn and read online. And so I think there are quite a few Canadians who are now looking into VPNs, which basically means you can establish a safe browsing experience for yourself and you can um, basically designate your, your IP address, your internet protocol address as being somewhere where you're not. So you could assign, you know, for example, we have our, our VPN set to um, Miami, Florida, right? Because I don't, whatever the Canadian government is pulling, I'm not playing, okay? So anyway, um, I use ExpressVPN. I link this for you in the workbook. You can actually uh, receive three months free through that link, but look into a VPN for sure. Just to protect, I mean, and, and the main reason you'll use it is to protect your browsing. You wanna make sure that um, there's nobody that's gonna be able to hack into your bank account, for example. I know it's crazy, right? What's going on in Canada? Pray for Canada, people, and Australia. Um, establish times for checking in on social media. So I kind of mentioned this in the calendar scrub the other day. You want to have checkpoints where you're going to be online, where you're, you're going to engage and check messages and check notifications. You want to have time blocked off in your calendar, especially if you know you're doing it anyway, call it out in your calendar so that there is a time where you're doing it and therefore there are times when you're not, right? Um, that way you can spend the rest of your day being more present. And one thing that can really wake you up in this area is looking at your average screen time on your phone. So if you use an iPhone, it'll actually give you this. If you go to settings and then you click on screen time, it will tell you exactly how much time you've been spending on the device, it'll actually break it down for you and show you how much time you're spending on apps like Instagram. Um, and that can be really insightful and can probably encourage you to set up checkpoints throughout the day. Another thing I wanna mention that I put in the workbook here is around refraining or resisting the urge to respond to people right away. I would, I would love for you to try this just for a couple months. And I've been banging this drum for years, you guys. I, I never respond to texts when they come in right away. Never, never. I never respond to emails, texts, notifications, never when they come in right away, unless I am like in my block of doing that at that moment. And people don't like that. I'll be honest with you. I mean, it's a joke. Like my friends joke, hey, like I always get a disclaimer when somebody texts me like, hey, I know you're really protective of your time, dot, dot, dot. But I would love for us all to consider what we're doing when somebody texts us and we respond right away. What, do, what are we teaching in that moment? What, what, what are we illustrating by getting back to somebody right away? I really want you to think about this because we have the, we, we've set this ridiculous precedent in our world where there's an assumption that if I text you, you should write me back right away. And the only reason that exists is because too many of us do that. What if we could flip the script on this and instead illustrate that we are somebody who is deeply focused on being present with what we are currently doing? I love when somebody does not get back to me for a day or two. That makes me happy because it tells me that they're living their life. And 
I don't want anyone to ever feel like when I message them, they need to get back to me right away. So I just want to drop that in and see if that lands for anybody right now, because um, it makes a huge difference in how you feel. And you'll also find that people respect you greater when you hold that boundary in place and you'll teach other people. They won't like it in the beginning, but you'll teach them. Um, what else haven't I mentioned in the tips? Let me see. Notifications, just on the last point I wanna make there. So in an effort to be less phony, um, turn all of your notifications off. What's the big deal? Why, why do we need to know the second somebody messages us? This is another one of those things where it's like, we're just so conditioned into thinking we have to be so available. And guys, this, if you break that down a little bit further, what you, what you realize is it's this fear that if you don't get back to somebody right away, they're not going to like you or accept you or what will they think of you, right? And if we could just for a second understand that this is the plague that we're dealing with right now for the most part is a concern of what other people are going to think of us if we do or don't do something. And it starts in the simplest of areas such as this, turning the notifications off so that you are not somebody who is readily available to everybody all the time. You are most available to yourself and to the people that mean the most to you, who chances are within the walls of your home. Um, so just something to consider. You can go to settings on your phone and turn them all off or choose one or two things that you want to make sure, like maybe you want to know when a text message has come in because maybe your personal approach with texting is that very few people have your cell phone number. So the people that do, you want to make sure you hear from them. You get the drift, but I, I think this is something that if you were to do this just even for a week to turn all notifications off, you'd be surprised at how much deeper you're breathing and how much more just connected you feel to what's most important. So, um, you know, when you go to your workbook, you'll see a sheet like this, which gives you the pieces I just went through as a nice checklist. Um, at the very end, I have the scrub worksheet. So this is on page 27. The scrub worksheet, which again, defines prep, gut, sort, and place when it comes to your phone. So um, preparing to do the big clean. So I give you the link to an app that helps you with your photos. Turn all those notifications off, even if it's just for the time period that you're doing the scrub. Uh, follow the checklist to gut your phone, podcasts, apps, and accounts you follow. And then arranging, so sorting everything back in, in a nice, tidy way. Um, and again, you'll notice that your phone is like way quicker because the gigs are not gonna be consumed as much. Um, so again, releasing this weight on our device is pretty big. It just helps everything to hum along better. Um, yeah, and then choose a new background image for your phone that represents what matters most to you in this season. I have a beautiful, majestic picture of a lion as my backdrop. Um, I think lions are in my ancestry, <laughs> just kidding. But uh, it resonate very much with the energy of that in this time. And so that's what my background, background photo is. Okay, so let's go through some resources. So I wanna share with you a page um, that I, I updated for our stream today. And um, it has all of the tools and apps that I use and I've found helpful in my business. There's also a ton of promo codes built in there. So. Let's hop over there together and I'll show you what you guys can find there. So if you go to wholefit.com, uh, and maybe somebody could type this out for me on both platforms, I'd super appreciate it. So wholefit.com, whole fit that's H-O-L-F-I-T.com forward slash time saving tools. Okay, this is something you'll probably wanna bookmark and come back to. It's pretty rich in content and links, um, but I, I basically over the years, I've updated this every time I came across something that was like a game changer in my life and business, I put it here. Um, when you first open this page, you'll see some quick links to programs that I offer, um, like the Beautiful Life Lab, Seasonal Scrub, which we're talking about here, and Life Scrub. And then um, I have shops. So I don't know how many of you knew this, but I have a shop section on Whole Fit, which has all of my 
um, favorite products linked by category. So you'll find a healthy home shop, glowing skin shop, a detox shop, an essential oil tools shop. But then pertaining to this section of productivity, I have um, the healthy home shop, the beautiful life lab shop, the seasonal scrub shop, a travel shop. So these are, these are all of the links for different things I mentioned. So you might want to scroll through those. Then I go through favorite tools sorted by category. So I have planning tools like Trello, Voxer, Meet Edgar, um, Plan to Eat, Google Calendar. Then I have a marketing category. So some of my favorite from marketing. So PicMonkey and Canva for uh, designing images. Um, Squarespace, which is what I use to build my website. Creative Market is what I purchase fonts and backgrounds from. Um, Planoly, like I mentioned, for photos for Instagram. Uh, some of my favorite stock photo sites like Stocksy and Unsplash. Uh, let me see. Tap Bio. I don't know if any of you have checked that out. So I use Tap Bio is something, if you go to my Instagram profile, you'll see I have one link there. And when you open that link, it gives you all of my hot links. So I use Tap, and I like Tap Bio because when I talk about something on my grid on Instagram, it'll automatically, based on the website that I type in the description of that photo, it will, when you click on Tap Bio, you can, it'll bring up my grid and you can click a photo and it will take you right to that link. So that's kind of a cool feature. Then I have an ideas and note taking section, um, Evernote, Simple Ant Notes, and then, oh, Captio. It's one of my favorite apps. What I love about it is it's, it's just basic, but you type something in and it sends it right to your inbox because my inbox is where I do my primary sorting of ideas and, and tasks. Um, so anything I want to make sure I don't forget about, I will type it into Captio and then it'll fire it off right into my inbox so that when I um, open and close my inbox twice a day, I'm able to see like my list of, of things I didn't want to forget, right? And then I just take action on them, whether it's plugging something into the ca calendar or adding it to I, I, any, like whatever, you know, think about things like, you know, all day long, I might, it might be something like, don't forget to um, order <laughs> garden soil. That was yesterday, right? So I, I just type it in and then I calendar that to make sure that that happens. Um, let me see, email. So I've linked up Flowdesk for you there, which is the platform I use for emails. Um, and again, all of these things have, or most of these things have promo codes and stuff built into them. So, uh, podcasting tools for any of you that are looking to get into podcasting. So premium beat is where I purchase music. Screenflow is where I do video editing. Um, I've got tools in there like the lav mic I use, the tripod. What else do I want to show you? Um, outsourcing. I have an outsourcing category there. Uh, so how to begin outsourcing, right? So maybe, maybe a lot of you, we talked about this in the time scrub, maybe a lot of you are feeling in your business that it's time to hire. Um, but you're just not sure, you know, how much you want to invest in that or what you can actually hire out. So I've linked up for you Fiverr, for example, where you can find like umpteen tasks that you can purchase for $5 for someone to complete for you, such as a logo creation. Um, 99 designs, that's an auction style design site, uh, freelancer, Upwork, ask for task, care.com. So some really great resources there if you're looking to do some more outsourcing in your business. And then I have all my favorite money tools linked up for you. So Mint is a tool I use for just seeing a complete snapshot of our finances and it refreshes live. So um, QuickBooks is another one uh, you'll want to look at if you're doing more of your own bookkeeping. Um, Expensify is my favorite app for tracking expenses. So if you own your own business, that's going to be a good one for you. It's, it's free. You can take pictures of your receipts and it just tracks all those for you. Um, let me see. I have an eating category there, travel category, uh, category on doTERRA. So I've linked up one drop for you there um, with a 10% off code, the back office toolkit. And then in the miscellaneous section, I have a few other things that I just couldn't be without, like Clean My Mac. It does a huge scrub of my desktop computer. 
Um, Bitly is linked on there. Shift. Shift is a platform that pulls all of your things into one, like Gmail, Evernote, Facebook, Voxer, Instagram, like you can have everything on one link and, and so you can see everything. And so that's nice if you don't wanna feel like you have all these tabs open all the time. Um, I've linked the ExpressVPN there for you. Um, it's all there. And then at the bottom, you'll see the phone apps. So I've separated it out into category. These are literally the, the apps that I have on my phone right now in albums and, and just all of my faves in one place. So. So that is that, that is the phone scrub. And I felt this was an important chapter to include in this workbook because we are spending so much time on our phones. I mean, how many of you run almost your entire business from your phone? And so we need to make sure it's something that is operating really efficiently for us. And most important that it's not something pulling us out of our, our presence and that which is most important to us, right? It's, it's something we have to get control of. And so anyway, I think you'll find the checklist in there helpful for, to just do on a quarterly basis with some helpful tools for helping it run better. And, um, and the shortcuts, I would, I would definitely look into the shortcuts and turning on settings to protect so that there aren't things coming at you when you don't want them to be coming at you. So I just, I'll just mention that, that tools website one more time. It was wholefit.com forward slash time saving tools. I updated that for this live today. So it's got all of the most current links. Um, I hope you grabbed a tip today that you find helpful. And I will be back to talk about scrubbing our kitchen and I'll share with you some tips and tools and the kitchen being the, the health and heart of our home. Um, it deserves a little scrub. So I'll see you back then. Mm -hmm.